silver shoes, a middle-aged stallion, and a lo the local silversmith sat huddled against the door leading into his cabin. Though he had locked the door, he still could not feel safe until he had the comforting knowledge of some weight pressed up against the door, somehow expecting that it would be more to keep out that which lurked just beyond the bo wooden barrier. Silver pressed his hoof harder against his ears. Even as he curled up tightly into himself, the constant sound of light scratching against the wooden against the wood on the other side a constant reminder that something was out there but worse the scratching seemed a constant saying as if whatever was out there knew that he was in here and it seemed intent on torturing him the Scratches would continue in the same monotone of slow sliding of something sharp against the wood that paused a moment before starting again. Something paused would leap, last for almost a minute before continuing. This only grew worse with the ad adding motions of something jiggling the doorknob and pushing and pulling lightly on the door. Then another scratch, then a jiggle, and a finally, a shaking of the door. Those three simple sounds over and over again in patterns that seemed bent on driving Silver mad with his fear. He sobbed, wrapping his hooves around his head as his attempt to muscle the noise seemed fruitless. How? How had this all come to be? He sobbed, hearing the scratching sat again. His mind began to replay the events before him, as if in flickering the metal pictures would help him recall things that had gone wrong, perhaps in them he might find salvation, or at least an explanation. Out of all the images that came to mind, his work as a silversmith, his family, his friends, his town. Out of all this, one image came to mind, an idol, that damn terrible idol. It was small, about the size of a mini watermelon. It was not all well made, a basic square base with four curved spikes at the top and curved till the point aimed at the flat base of the idol. The base was decorated with old runes and images of figures. When they had founded it, every pony assumed it was some sort of old relics and news of its spread attracting archaeologists from across the Equestria, the mines and its surrounding lines soon became a dig for further artifacts. For a week, the dig turned up little, save old potteries and stone figures. One digger said he might have found a tunnel leading to into what was assumed to be a complex of sorts. Of course, no pony was able to find out, as on the last day of the, that week, things began to change. Slowly by slowly, Little by little, a fog started to appear in the town. Nothing the weather ponies did seemed to make it go away. Ponies were concerned, but figured there was just some wild fog that blew in from the Everfree. The town was right on the border, after all. Ponies assumed that, in time, the fog would pass away. The fog slowly began to grow, hour by hour, until it engulfed the entire town in a thick, white, hazy screen. Ponies could see barely a hoof in front of them. That's when the screaming began. Silver had been outside with his wife when they, when they heard the first of the screams. It sounded like a pony was being brutally murdered in the thick fog. 
pony shouted, running and fleeing in the fog of desperately, despite the difficulties of sight. All the while, the screams kept up, the screams of ripping and flesh and blood splattering on the ground and walls of the house. Silver and his wife did not bother to wonder what was happening. Their instincts for survival kicked in, and they ran as fast as their hooves could carry them to their cabin on the outskirts of town. The fog seemed to be constant, a constant companion with them. They were just a few feet from their home when Silver's wife tripped and fell. Silver turned, ready to go back and run to help his wife, but any such thoughts faded when he heard her screaming. The sounds of ripping flesh evidence in the air. Fear took hold, and accompanied by sadness, Silver cried even as he ran, part of his mind telling him to go back to help his wife, but a more primal part telling him to run. He kept running, bursting through the door of his cabin, slamming the door shut, and locking it up. And so, here he was. Locked in his house, curled in a ball, weeping and crying, and outside the sounds of the cer scratching continued. What had caused it? Had it been the idol? It was the only explanation, or that's how it seemed to Silver. Somehow it had brought the fog, and with the fog had come. Come. Come what? Silver sucked in a breath, and peered over the window near the wet door. The outside was white and hazy with the fog. He couldn't see anything, and yet, yet he had to know. He didn't want to know, but he had to know what was out there. He knew something was out there, and curiosity compelled him to go to look. Slowly, surely, he crawled over the window. The scratching of the door never stopped. Slowly, he peeked out the window. He didn't see anything. Silver leapt back as, as a thin stick, like appendage of claws connected to, the long, to a long, just as thin limb, planting itself on the window. It was covered in pink blood, covered skin that seemed to stretch over the bone. The claws bent, and a head appeared in sight of the window. Silver began to hyperventilate now, as he stared into a bloody pink-skinned face. It had long, paper-thin, slit eyes, and no mouth, and no nose. Its mouth was thin, and had sharp teeth, slipping out between where lips should be. Its eyes were long and curved, almost bitten, and chewed. The head had no neck, just connected to an oval-shaped body. The creature stared at him, then it tapped on the glass, before its claws reached out beyond the window view to where the door would be. All the while, the creature's eyes... All the while, the creature kept its eyes on Silver. Silver covered his face, trying to hide himself from the creature. As he heard its scratch at the door, he pushed himself back against the nightstand, with his legs knocking it down, and the contents of the drawer fell out. Silver looked the wet, spilled items to the creature in the window and to the door. Celestia... It knew it was in here. It wanted to get it. With horror, Silver saw what looked like holes beginning to appear on the side of inside portion of the house. The tip of the long, thin claws peeking and poking through as it dragged the wood apart. The fog slowly began to seep through. Silver began to breathe heavy, his heart racing. The thin, claw-like fingers flickered the lock, trying to undo it with what little movement the creature had. 
Silver looked around for any means of escape. There was none, of course, until his eyes saw it. It was his gun, an old Griffin model he had purchased as a means of self-defense. It took a long time to reload, and the ball bullet was not the most accurate, but it was top of the line in the Griffin Kingdom. Silver didn't know if it would work on whatever it was trying to get in. He had one shot. That was it. That was the way out. Silver began to cry and laugh at the same time. He was dead. He was going to die. Just like his wife had died. Just like every pony in the town had died. He might as well die quickly than however which way this creature outside would end him. Slowly, Silver took the gun in his hoof. A smile crept over his face, a tear rolled down his eyes. He placed the gun to his head and pulled the trigger. His body slumped and the gun fell to the ground. With a chatter, he laid there, his blood pooling on the ground, on the floor. Eventually, the white haze swept fully into the cabin and two long, thin claw-like hands gripped Silver's limp body and pulled him into the fog.